Hey everyone, Blitzball Champs back here with a brand new video here on the U to the Tube. Alright, week 11 here for the Carolina Panthers. Um, we got the Detroit Lions visiting the Carolina Panthers at home um, here in week 11. Um, Detroit Lions are 4 and 5. Carolina Panthers are three and seven. So uh, let's let's talk. Let's talk about it. Let's let's preview this. Um, you have the matchup predictor, the ESPN matchup predictor, fifty four point three percent chance that Carolina wins, forty five point three percent chance Detroit wins, and a zero point four percent chance of a tie. Um, looking at injuries, uh, apparently on the, the, the Lions, uh, Matthew Stafford is listed as questionable. So still no word on if he will be good to go on, um, Sunday or not, but that's, that's something to, something to keep in mind, something to definitely keep in mind. But, uh, yeah, so even though they won their, their previous game and Matt, Matthew Stafford, you know, had a great game, threw for three touchdowns, uh, he's listed as questionable. Um, just thought that was really the name that stuck out the most. For Carolina, so we know for sure that Christian McCaffrey will be out for this game. Um, and it's looking like Russell Okun will be out once again. And potentially Dante Jackson will be sitting this one out. So I'm actually relieved to hear that. You know, he's still favoring his tur turf toe. So I think this is a good move. Go ahead and sit Dante down. Let him heal. So... I hope that they stick to that. Um, and also, uh, John Miller is uh, listed as doubtful. And even Teddy Bridgewater was limited in practice. And it's it's still, still kind of questionable whether he's going to be the starting quarterback for the Sunday. But uh, we also had limited practices from... Uh, to hear Whitehead, Sam Franklin, YGM, Marquise Haynes, Chris Manhurts, Mike Davis, and Rousseau Douglas were full practice participants. So the whole thing is that they're trying to figure out is if Bridgewater can't go, who will start? It's either going to be P.J. Walker or it's going to be Will Greer. Now, we already have had two starts before last season with Will Greer, and we all remember how that went. Uh, P.J. Walker has yet to have his first career start. So, I don't know. Who do you, who do you go with? Who do you really go with? You know, a lot of people say, you know, P.J. Walker, you know, is not good. It's terrible and all, but I mean, would y'all do y'all want to give Will, Will Greer a shot? I mean, in his two starts, he didn't throw a single touchdown. So I mean, you know, I can't say that he's any better than P.J. Walker. He hasn't really proven that. So you you really, it's hard for me to favor one over the other, to be honest. If you ask me, they're probably both about even. So it's it's scary. It's scary. So uh yeah. But um folks to keep in mind, uh one thing with Detroit, Matthew Stafford, especially if he does still play. You never know what Matthew Stafford you're going to get. It's kind of scary. On one hand, you could get a very bad, you know, interception heavy. 
Matthew Stafford. And in some games, you could get a four to five touchdown loaded Matthew Stafford. Because he's capable of that as well. So it's going to be really key to get pressure on Stafford and not let him get comfortable. Because we all have to remember, last meeting with Detroit, they beat us. I believe it was by one point, but they beat us. So this is this is important. This is an important game. Um, even though playoffs is out of reach, we, we still got to win these games. We got to see what we have talent-wise, who's coming, who's come here to play, who's going to play hard, and who's going to contribute to help us win games. It's still very important. But um, it'll be interesting to see what Matthew Stafford we get this Sunday. Uh, of course, they have uh, DeAndre Swift and uh, – I believe they have, oh yeah, Adrian Peterson. Um, don't sleep on him. Adrian Peterson can still play. Don't sleep on him. Um, Marvin Jones Jr., pretty, pretty notable receiver. Um, they also got Danny Amendola. Uh, I look for them to spread the ball around, but we can't get slack. On these receivers, let's let's be real. We can't get slack on on the receivers because anybody can break out. Um. Uh, let's see on defense. Uh, Desmond Trufant. Um. Of course, they got a rookie draft pick Jeff Okda out of Ohio State. Um. I don't really know too many others, other notable names, on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But fact of the matter is, you know, last meeting with the Lions, we lost. So, you know, this is definitely not a gimme game. And, you know, looking at the type of looking at the type of year that the Lions have had so far. Yeah, you know, let me just let me just dig in a little bit. I mean, they've been able to put up points. They have an offense that can put up points. And as a matter of fact, in each of their games, even including losses, they've been able to put up at least 20 points. At least. And in their victories, they've put up 26, 34, 23, and 30. So, they have a team that can put points on the board. They might be last in the NFC North, but they can put points on the board. And Carolina's defense has not been great this year. They haven't. They haven't been great. Especially with how bad they are on third down. Shoot. Detroit could potentially have, have their way on third downs. So just keep that in mind, y'all. It's something we have to do better at. Third down. On the offense and on the defense. I'm more concerned with the defense because, I mean, come on. We gave up a check down on a third and 19 last week against the Bucks. That's just bad. That's just really bad. But, um, you know, on defense, we got to start getting sacks. Like, going through all these games with, you know, I believe, if I remember correctly, going into this week, we have 11 sacks. 11 total sacks. Now, it's definitely a once in a blue moon that we get a sack. Each game. I think the most sacks that we have gotten in a single game, I think is two. So when you think about it throughout the weeks, we only average maybe like one sack a game. That's not good. That's not good. Pressure is great and all, 
but it really you really seal the deal when you can get to the quarterback. And we have not done a good job of that. So this defense really need to get to the quarterback in this game. This needs to be a game that they get to the quarterback. Uh, let's see. I mean, we have the, we have the weapons on offense. You know, even if we have a different quarterback, we still have the weapons on offense. But one thing that I am very concerned with is just the overall decision making on offense, the play calling, the execution, the decision making. You know, what regardless of whether PJ Walker or Will Greer is behind center. Uh execution needs to be on point. DJ Moore had a great game. We gotta get DJ Moore back involved. We gotta get Curtis Samuel back involved. He's our third down guy. He's proven that. You know, got to get Robbie Anderson going. We got to take some shots downfield. I mean, the checkdowns are, are, are nice when they can get us what we need, but we we got to start taking some shots a little bit more downfield because we have the personnel to do it. We just need the execution and the play calling. And the offensive line, offensive line definitely has got to hold it together. I don't know if anybody notable on Detroit's defensive line, but I mean, hopefully the O line can 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 be sharp in this game. I'm really hoping they can be sharp. And just on defense, we got to get to the quarterback. We got to play smart. Uh, we can't go to sleep on any of these receivers. Uh, they're they're leading. Receiver is Danny Amendola, and you know he's he's good. But like I said, Matthew Stafford on his best games he gets three to five touchdowns, very capable. So we gotta we gotta really really shut down him. We gotta shut down the run. Let's not sleep on the run. Adrian Peterson can still break out. Can still break out. Um there's real there's really not a whole lot more that I can say but just play smart play smart make good decisions execute on offense and defense we got to be successful on third downs on both sides of the ball we got to be successful on the offense at getting the third downs, and we got to be successful on the on the defense, stopping them, and getting off the field, which is something that that Carolina has struggled with all year, getting off the field. So that's pretty much it. This is a very winnable game. It's a very winnable game, but the team has to execute. Have to really, really execute. Before I close this out, there's there's a few things that I want to say that, you know, I've been it was kind of on my mind. Okay. So all those, you know, with the idea of trading Christian McCaffrey, or we should have traded him, or he's getting paid too much, and such and such. Really? Why why are some of y'all out there suggesting Christian McCaffrey to be traded. You want us to trade our best player on the team. Number one, a player who has earned that money he's getting. Let's not even kid ourselves. He earned that money. Getting a thousand yards rushing and a thousand yards receiving at the same time in a season is not normal. And it's not easy to do. With how Christian McCaffrey has played so far, he earned that money. 
and he earned his spot as one of the best running backs in the league. Secondly, this is the first time that he's been seriously hurt since coming into the NFL. This is the first time he's been seriously hurt and already y'all are talking about trading him. Why are y'all giving up that easily on, on Christian McCaffrey? I mean, can can he not bounce back? I mean, he was doing fine even in, in the um in the Chiefs game. Like, I don't understand the whole idea behind trading Christian McCaffrey, trading our best player. Like, why? I mean, we we traded our way our best offensive lineman at the time and Trey Turner and got Russell Okung, and what has that done for us? Huh? What has that done for us? How many games has Russell Okung even played this season? Think about it. Really think about it. Don't trade somebody away unless there's a serious, legit reason to. And there is no legit reason to trade away Christian McCaffrey. There's no reason. And it's like, dang. First time that he's gotten seriously hurt. You know, nothing career injury, nothing career ending or anything like that. He's been banged up a, a little. But first time he's been, you know, hurt badly. And already folks are like, oh, let's trade him. We should have traded him. Like, really? I mean, dang, injuries happen. I mean, it's unfortunate. Don't want anybody to get injured. But dang, get the dude an opportunity to bounce back. Have y'all already forgotten what he's done for the team? Like, jeez. <laughs> I don't get some of the fans these time, these these days. I really don't. I just help me to understand, because I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. It makes no flipping sense to me. It doesn't. So. But. And then, the other thing was Steve Smith said on a radio show, I don't remember what it was, I remember uh, the Big Cat was talking about it, he did a video about it. Steve Smith, my all-time favorite player, said to start lowering your expectations on the Carolina Panthers. This team is built for a sprint, not for a marathon. I, I kind of get what he's saying in a way. I kind of get what he's saying, but I don't fully agree. And why I don't fully agree is I think this team is built for a marathon, but there's certain things that need to come into play. For example, coaching and execution are what stick out to me the most. Finishing games. This team is capable of finishing games. They just have to make the right decisions that equal finishing the game as a whole. But they're very capable of doing that. And the whole, you know, lower your expectations. I wouldn't I don't think any fan should ever lower their expectations for for any team. The whole idea is you want to see your team win. I take it a game at a time. Now, while ultimately we won't make make the playoffs, and, and I get it, but you still 
as a fan, should hope for the best for your team. Hope for wins. And also see 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 what you have out there. You know, this potentially is going to turn into let's get our folks out there and see who will rise up. I want to see if Troy Pride Jr. can rise up. I want to see if Jeremy Chen can rise up even more. I want to see if maybe Stanley Thomas Oliver III can rise up. Sam Franklin, Justin Burris, you know, or even, you know, the D-line, YGM, you know, Derek Brown, you know. I want to see who rises up in the midst of these remaining games because it's going to lead to a few things. It's going to lead to, you know, people getting a chance to be re-signed and, or extended to stay on this team, important pieces, and developing leaders. If anything, I would really like to see a leader created on the defense because we, we, we don't have a leader on defense. We don't. Sorry, Shaq, but you're not there yet. You'll get there someday, but you're, I don't think you're there yet. This team doesn't have a leader on defense. Luke Keekley was a leader on defense. Luke Keekley ain't here no more. So, I'm not going to lower my expectations. I'm going to still keep pushing for this team to win as many games as they can before the end of week 17. Otherwise, I feel like I'd be, be doing a disservice as a fan. Y'all might agree, y'all might disagree, but it makes no sense for me to, you know, predict so negatively and still watch the games. You know, I originally predicted 6 and 10. But I have no problem being wrong if it ends up being a much better record. I still want to see for myself. So, not to mention, I've already been through uh, dealing with this team being at 1 and 15 before. So, it's not like it could get any worse for me. But that's just me. <clears throat> anyway, what do y'all think? What do y'all think about this matchup? Carolina and Detroit. Y'all think we will finally uh, get back on, on a winning track? Because right now we've, we've lost five in a row. So do you feel this is what gets us back on track? Um... What do y'all think the keys are? If, if it was up to y'all, who would you start? Will Greer or P.J. Walker? If Teddy Bridgewater can't go. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed weekend. I'll see y'all soon. Laters.